Fast fertig, fast. together these sound really good too. I'm busy with uh, researching the question of tango or piano solo as a subject because I'm a big fan of tango music and I always wanted to play uh, but 
I didn't want to end up playing only Piazzolla. Uh, so I did a lot of researches on the internet for possible other tango music written also by contemporary composers. And by accident, I found a link <coughs> on the internet uh, referring to a big tango collection somewhere at the Buffalo Music Library. So I clicked on that and there it was. It was uh, a collection of tangos, 127 to be exact, which was commissioned by an American pianist, Ivar Mikhashov, back in the 80s. And <clears throat> the library had a complete list with titles and the names of the composers and everything what was available at the library. So I got extremely interested in that. And I got in touch with, uh, with the library. They were unbelievably helpful, I have to say. They went through the whole list with me, and um, you have to imagine a lot of these pieces are not published, and a lot of these pieces only exist in sketches or manuscripts. So the uh, library had a limited amount of scores. Some of them were published before. And um, they also helped me a lot with the contact information about composers so that I could get in touch with them and try to collect as many scores as possible. So that's what I've been doing for the past one and a half year, more or less. You know, the, the funny thing was when I tell some of my friends or colleagues uh, that I'm recording a CD of contemporary tango music, the reaction is always the same. They say, oh, nice, Piazzolla. And so it makes me a little bit smile, of course, because uh, it makes me also realize how little we actually know about contemporary tango music. And there is so much more than we can imagine. And there's so many composers that really... Uh, wrote pieces dedicated to the genre of, of dan dance and music. And uh, in this collection, the more, no, the more scores I was collecting uh, and reading through them, I found an enormous variety of styles and ideas behind each tango. Um, so it's not necessarily sounds like tango sometimes, but the composer might have a, a different idea about what this word means to him. Um, some of them, I'll give an example. For instance, the tango I'm, I recorded of uh, Milton Babbitt is called uh, It Takes Twelve to Tango. And um, why? Because it's written in a 12 tone technique, which he's famous for. And you would say, my God, how, how this possibly can sound like a tango? Uh, but the fascinating thing is that it sounds very much like it because of the rhythm that he's using. And uh, so the tempo combination with the rhythm you get this flow, which is obviously a tango flow. So it works perfectly. Or the other example is of a composer called uh, Jackson Hill. He wrote a tango, which is called Tango No Tango, uh, explaining that tango in Japanese actually is a festivity. Um, it's, it's a festivity celebrated each uh, fifth, month of the, of the fifth, fifth month of the year. And it's the festival of the flags. 
or they also call it the boys' day. So in some way, it's a completely different approach to the word itself. So a lot of composers are playing around with the tango idea and uh, a lot of impressionistic uh, t pieces. There is also minimalistic pieces, very abstract, uh, very traditional as well. And so the, the, the all summarized, it's, it's, it's very, very colorful.
making a choice was actually quite hard because there's so many pieces and I had to go through all of them and thinking that, okay, now I will make a first CD, which should be about an hour, a little bit over. Uh, so you end up with about 20 pieces. So how do you make a choice? What should you record? And of course, it's all based on my personal preferences at that particular moment. And of course, I tried to combine pieces in such a way that you have an overview of different styles, different moods, different tempi, um, to give as much as possible the the feeling for each possible idea behind behind the composers and and the pieces that they wrote. So this was the main my main focus while choosing the pieces. Of course, I would love to go on, and after finishing this first CD, I would like to go on and. Uh, record another one and uh, I hope it will work of course it's not um, it's not very easy because because of the financial question as well you know uh, it costs quite a lot of money but uh, the idea is definitely there and uh, I hope it will work one day mm -hmm.